Hey guys, what's up? It's Dylan White from Microsoft Security Insights. Um, so yesterday I held my first Ask Me Anything session with a, a few people from my Twitter circle and some interesting things came from it. Um, and the Ask Me Anything was based around just a career in tech sales in general. So for those of you that don't know, I work in, in a tech seal, sales position. I work as a solutions architect, which basically means nothing different than sales engineering, right? So I work for a product, which in my case is Microsoft Security. And I sell that product to customers. I don't have design solutions and I interface directly with the account teams and account salespeople. So yesterday, the session I held was just all around tech sales and what user people could think of for tech sales um, and how people can start careers, what it means, the pay ranges, and just different companies that hire tech salespeople with maybe no experience at all. Um, and I think it's actually a really good entry level career to break into if you're okay with some of the caveats. Um, and so some people look at situations like Twitter and they see, hey, I could start a career in tech sales and make, you know, 300 grand. Let's be real. That's not your entry level career. And right? that's not where you're starting at. Um, so having some, you know, understanding of the basics is crucial. Um, I think it's really important for people not to go out into the industry today expecting, hey, I'm going to get an offer letter. It's going to be 120 grand. Right? It's not how sales works. Sales is a commission based industry. Um, anybody that doesn't think that needs a reality check. Sales is commission based. Um, and when it means commission based, nine times out of 10, your salary starts extremely low, right? So your base pay, that's what it was called. It starts usually somewhere around 40 to 60 K will be your window. Um, but usually what's you get, what's called a commission variable. So usually you get your base pay is usually 30%. Your other pay is commission pay 70%, right? So let's say your base, pay, your, over all time earnings, right? Or on target earnings, your OTE is set to be 300K, right? And that's an account executive position, 300K. So you, your base pay is only gonna be 30% of that, which in that case would be roughly 300 divided by 10, the 30 times that by three, you're getting 90K, right? So not bad, don't get me wrong. That's also an account executive. Account executives are usually the second to third tier on the sales ladder. The starting tier on that is what's called a business development representative. And they are usually making much less. Those are usually your 40 to 60K band. And usually the commission on that, you're looking maybe on target earnings of like 120 to 140K. Um, so it's much lower, much, but it's an entry, right? That's your starting position. And if you're a rock star, you can absolutely crush the 120K, go past it, right? But there are caveats that you should know. And I don't think a lot of people in the industry understand that. When people are blasting these posts out on TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn about, hey, I'm, I went to tech sales and started making 600K. I'm not telling you the full story. I'm not telling you their, their pipeline, how they got there in three years, right? Maybe five years. They're telling you the extremes of that story, which I don't think is fair, right? So when I host these Ask Me Anything, I want people to ask me anything. I will tell you the exact story of how it happens to be of people I know in the industry, because there are some outliers, right? There's some people out there that make 600 grand in a year. There's some people that make 1.2 million a year. Uh, I have a friend who made a 40K commission check. Is it an outlier? Yeah, that's not there every month. Some months it's feast or famine in sales. And um, I really want people to understand that and know that story. Um, and so one thing with the Ask Me Anything is I'll be hosting them every week. And if people join them, they join them. If not, they don't. But one thing I will say is yesterday's session, we had an awesome time, right? Like I learned a lot about people, what they knew, what they didn't know. Um, that gives me an insight that I didn't have before, right? And I think a lot of people could do more by just asking the question. Just ask, right? So if you ask me for help, I'm gonna help you. I'm not ask. I don't ask people for money. I don't take money from anybody. Um, I think it's super important that you don't in this industry. The world's too small. Your network is your net worth. I'll say it all the time. Now, if you want further services, like maybe you want resume help, or you want, you know, help, you know, getting help with certifications, then yeah, you can ask me about, you know, what I do from a coaching standpoint because it's different, right? Being somebody's mentor or being somebody's friend and peer from the outside and doing and asking anything. Hey, can you just help out? Listen to my that's different than being a coach, very different. Um, and that's not what these Ask Me Anything sessions are about. Free sessions, ask me whatever you have to ask me about tech sales and I'll tell you. Is that there's different ways to break in and there's different ways to go about joining this industry. Um, myself personally, I've been in the industry of tech for well, going on 12 years almost. And I've done everything from help desk engineering. Uh, I've done virtualization engineering, been a network analyst, been a SOC analyst, um, been a security engineer, been a data loss prevention engineer, been um, an Azure engineer, been an Azure platform architect. And now 
I've been an exchange me. I've been a migration expert. I've done it all, right? And so I think it's important to talk about all the different ways you can enter this field. Um, another thing that we hit on during the Ask Me Anything yesterday, it's just a lot of people don't know where you can go to even find the jobs. Um, I think it's crazy that with Google, with everything we have today, that a lot of people don't talk about just different out of the box ways other than LinkedIn, other than Indeed, other than ZipRecruiter, that you can find where companies might want help. Um, and I think tech is huge. So one of the big providers out there that actually makes a list of the top thousands of different companies out there from a company perspective is the CRN channel, right? So they have great resources on there for top value added reseller companies, top managed service provider companies, and all these companies partner with different tech companies and they need people, right? They need to sell their services to customers. So they have a great need for tech salespeople. And I think it's just a different resource out there where you can go look on their websites and find possible openings and then go apply, network with people. And I think those are things that we miss in today's industry a lot. We miss the networking aspect. We think we can just go hit apply or easy apply on LinkedIn and we're going to get hit up for an application. It doesn't happen like that. It really doesn't. Unless your profile is a rock star, you're not going to get hit up for just applying. You got to go above and beyond. You got to write the email. You got to go look on LinkedIn to see if you can know anybody at the company that you just applied to and hit them up, right? Ask for the referral. Ask for just, hey, can you, can I, can I buy you a coffee and just chat for 15 minutes? Cool. I'll chat with people for free. Like I'll help you with it however I can. I think it's super important. Um, one other aspect I want to hit on that we talked about, we covered is just the complete deception of right now, social media. Um, I think it's a big problem. It's not, you know, it's just generalized information out there, whether it's good or bad, it's a lot of generalized information. And I think it's important as individuals to clarify your information. Don't just assume that those jobs out there, don't just, don't just assume that boot camps can get you the job. And we've all seen the, hey, I have a boot camp for seven grand, take this boot camp, get three certs in 90 days, you'll be having a 600K career in 90 days. It's not real, let's be honest. Um, it's definitely not real and it's definitely just false advertising. Like if you can go out and get your A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+, plus in 90 days and land a job paying six figures, you're an outlier, you are. I think it's a very much more broad story to say, hey, get the, these three certs, you know, maybe in a year and come out making 60K. I know people that have gotten their, you know, focused really hard on the niche and got, a, you know, their security plus cert and gone on to get a 75K job. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great starting point. My first job in IT, I made 45K as a civilian. That was almost seven years ago. And I'm making much more than that now, almost triple that. And it's it's not because I've done anything crazy. It's just because I've been determined and I apply and I'm never afraid to ask. I think enough people here in this industry, just you have to ask because nothing's given. You have to put your best self forward every single day. Um, and I think it's really important to do that. And I think it's important for all of us to take accountability for our own actions, right? Like if you can't just sit there and say, hey, I, I deserve a raise. It doesn't work like that. You got to show them you deserve the raise. Then you got to go ask for it. Nobody's going to give you free money. Like not in corporate, not in your real life. Nobody just gives you money off trees. You got to go ask for it. Sometimes you just got to leave. Like some companies, they're just going to sell you. Hey, we don't have the budget for you to stay. Or we don't have the budget. We, we think you're an absolute rock star. We hate to see you go, but we don't have the budget to pay you. That's fair. And you have to decide if it's worth saying, hey, maybe the grass is green on the other side and go investigate it and see if it's worth it. If it's not worth it, the company doesn't feel like the right fit. Don't take the job. But sometimes you have to leave for that, you know, for that growth. It just is what it is. That's the corporate story. Um, and I think it's really important to, to understand that. So I think what I really want to go forth in these next few AMAs I'm holding this month is go forth in the technical path and kind of go through some more. This is how you can break into tech. Um, I think it's a lot of people have a story where, hey, I want to be fully remote. I want to work work in tech or I want a better career. I think fully remote, is, there's some jobs out there, but I think it's going away. I think hybrid is probably the way of the future in some aspects. Um, I think certain tech roles will have the remote capability. Um, and I think you'll earn more remote capability the more you show that you have trust in your job. I think some jobs are gonna require you to be on site for 
you know, two, three days a week. And the more they trust you, the more you can work remote. That's pretty standard and pretty what I've seen out there. But we're going to go into that. So I think next week we're going to talk about how you can break into an entry level role as a, as a help desk engineer and, and work your way up. And I think it's going to be an interesting talk because I think a lot of people just have a different depiction of what help desk engineering really is. So until then, this has been Security Insights with Dylan White.